but a minute y'all let me know, okay, when? Okay. I just need a song book, Brother Brooks, let me get it. I just got this on standby in case something happened back there. Oh, I could yeah. always. <laughs> I could always fix that. We're celebrating, number one, it's the Lord's Day. We're thankful for the Lord's Day. Um, also, uh, we're thankful this morning that we have a new grandson. Uh, yeah, my, uh, Minnesota Herbie had, um, this is our third boy, so third boy. Uh -huh. And then also thirdly, um, this is our anniversary today. Linda and my anniversary today. Okay. <laughs> a lot going on today. Yeah. Uh -huh. I was going to say, last time I met them, they were here. They had, they had, they had, they had a baby here last time I met them. Exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. So, so, so the last time I met them, they had, they had, they had, they had the, 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 the first, the one that the first time I had two years ago? Yeah, they're about two years apart. Right. They're about right. two years apart. <laughs> yeah, they're doing good. The first song this morning, when we get started, would be um, song number 611, 611, Heavenly Sunlight. 611. So, Brother Bennett, y'all, you all going to let me know? Okay. Okay. Carrington and Marla, good to see y'all. Good to see y'all this morning. Good morning. We're thankful that you tune in with us this morning as we worship God in spirit and in truth. Thankful that you have given us your time, knowing that time is so important. On the Lord's Day, we, uh, we have an opportunity to, on the first day of the week, to worship him in the spirit and truth. We give him our first and best. And we continue to thank him day in and day out for all that he does. Paul says, in him we live and breathe and have our very being. This morning we'll be dealing with mental and spiritual health. We don't talk about that enough because even the strongest of us get discouraged. We'll see this morning where Elijah he gets discouraged. He gets depressed. We saw in Numbers 11 where Moses, the great leader, he got depressed. And even Job, in Job 29, the young friend says to him, Elihu, he said, Job, there was a time when you even got discouraged in you talking about your situation. So we do get discouraged. But this morning, I hope, trust, and pray that we will glean from God's word uh, spiritual and mental health that will pick us up, that will allow us to move on through this wonderful life that God has given us. And it is a wonderful life. Those that are in Christ, it is an abundant life. And so we're thankful to God. This morning, we want to sing song number 611, and then Brother Brooks of course, will lead us in the word of prayer. 611, heavenly sunlight, heavenly sunlight, taken from John 8, verse number 12. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He is the bright and morning star. 611. <clears throat> Walking in sunlight all on my journey, over the mountains, through the deep vale. Uh, Jesus has said, I never forsake thee. Promise divine that never can fail. Heavenly sunlight, her heavenly sunlight, flooding my soul with glory divine. 
Hallelujah. I am rejoicing, singing his praises. Jesus is mine. Shallows around me, shallows above me, never conceal my Savior and God. He is the light, in him is no darkness, ever unwalking close to his side. Her heavenly sunlight, her heavenly sunlight, blood in my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah, I am rejoicing, singing his praises. Jesus is mine in that bright sunlight, oh, ever rejoicing, pressing my way to mansions above, singing his praises, gladly I'm walking, walking in sunlight, sunlight of love, oh, heavenly sunlight, oh, heavenly sunlight, Flood in my soul with glory divine. Hallelujah. Oh, I am rejoicing, singing his praise, cause Jesus is mine. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we bathe this morning in your new mercies yeah. because you love us not because of us, but in spite of us, but because of your son, Jesus, the Christ. Amen. We thank you for each person that's here today. And we know, Father, that they came for one express purpose, and that is to give you their undivided attention. Amen. And we know that the reason that they are able to do that today is that they gave you their undivided attention all through the week. In spite of the trauma that this world is going through, just as it did in Genesis chapter 3, throughout the history of man, man has been traumatized by one enemy, and he's called Satan. Mm -hmm. Father, we know that there are many enemies of the mind. Whatever form that they may take themselves, take, take on, whatever the genre, we know that those things that's not of you is of, uh, of the devil, and they can cause our mind to be as mentally ill as the prodigal son's mind. And Father, I, I pray, Father, that we will be like the Hebrew boys, that in their hour of trauma, they imagine their future beyond their present trauma and put everything in your hands to deliver them. Bless us as we go through the furtherness of this service. Thank you for this opportunity that we have, this obligation that we have, that we may obey you and worship in you in spirit and in truth. Forgive us for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Brother Marcus will come around and sing one song and we'll have scripture reading and prayer. 480, 480, 480. Bless assurance, 480, for his reading prayer. Have it. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretest and glory divine. Here is salvation, precious of God. Born of his spirit, we're washed in his blood. This is my story, and this is my song. Raising my Savior all the day long. And this is my story, and this is my song. I'm raising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect in life. This is a rapture that proceeds my side. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. And this is my story, and this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. And 
this is my story, and this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Preface of mission, all the day rest. I am my Savior and happy and blessed. And watching and waiting and looking above. Filled with his goodness, lost in his love. And this is my story, and this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. And this is my story, and this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. And this is my story, and this is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. And this is my story, and this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This morning, the scripture is taken from 1 Kings 19 chapter, verses 1 through 5, 1 through 4. So 1 Kings 19 chapter, verses 1 through 4. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, so let the God do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Bathsheba which belonged to Judah and left his servants there. But he himself went a day journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die and said, It is enough now, Lord. Take my life. I am, not, I am no better than my father. As a reading of the scripture, let us all stand as we go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, gracious Father, we are so thankful that we are able to be here this morning. We know through your love and your mercy and grace that we are all here. And we thank you, Lord, for your Savior, Jesus Christ who came and died for our sins. He paid a debt that we cannot pay. We pray, oh Lord, that we continue to be strengthened through your word, which is a lamp to our feet and a light to our pathway. We pray, oh Lord, that we can say the statement that's written, for we'll be challenged every day of our life as temptation come upon us. But we thank you, oh Lord, that we can always look to you, from which our help comes from above. We ask for your strength and guidance from your Holy Spirit mm. to direct our step. Yes. For we cannot do it alone, O Lord. We rely on you, not on, not on our own. Yes. And we pray, O Lord, that you continue to be with each and every member that strive to live a life of Christ. We pray, O Lord, you be with Brother Moore as he brings us to the next hour. We pray, O Lord, you bless him and his family as he preached the word to a dying, sentient world. We pray, O oh Lord, for all things that are going on in the part of the country, or wars, and also in our home country, yes. of folks doing all these killings. Yes. But we know you have everything under control. Yes. And we know vengeance is yours. Yes. And we pray, O oh Lord, that you be with the family, those who lost loved ones, comfort them, O oh Lord. And we pray, O oh Lord, for those who are going through trials in their life that we all go through, depression, and just mental illness. We pray, oh Lord, we ask for your strength and that we always come to you. For we all must seek you first, the kingdom, and we know all these things will be added to us. And we 
We know everything is possible with you. Forgive us our sin. Guide and direct us. And we pray, oh Lord, as we go into the public service, that we will sing praise to your name, do everything according to that will, and worship you in spirit and truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Entertain song gonna be hymn number 904. 904 invitation. 904. Hey, been to Jesus. 904 invitation. And then song four is gonna sing hymn number four three. Oh, I want to see him. And that's how you do it. Song, but oh, I want to see him for the message. All the labels, please stand this time. Once again, 904, song invitation. And then I want to see him, song for the message. <coughs> Have it. As I journey through this land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many hours pierced my soul from within, within. But my Lord leads me on. Through him I must win, singing, oh, I want to see him look upon his face, seem to dare to see forever and want his saving grace, saving grace on the streets of glory, lift me, lift my voice, cast I pass, I mean home at last, ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I cling more close to him, he will give you light. Satan's sins may vex the soul, turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord goes ahead, leaves whatever be tied, singing, oh, no, I want to see him look upon his face, singing there to sing forever, his saving grace of his saving grace on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice, cast a pass on me home at last, ever to rejoice, when it's valley low, the look toward the mighty pine, and behold my Savior there, Leading in the fight, with a tender hand I stretch toward the valley's low. God in me, I can see as I onward go, singing, oh, I want to see him look upon his face, singing there to see forever his saving grace of his saving grace on the streets of glory let me live my voice cast a pass on me home at last ever to rejoice when before me billows rise from the mighty deep then my lord directs my boy he don't safely keep and he leads me gently on to the world below. He's a real friend to me. Oh, I love him so. Singing, oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Singing there to sing forever. His saving grace of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me live my full heart. Cast a path on me home at last, ever to rejoice, singing, oh, I want to see him look upon his face, singing there to sing forever, ever, his saving grace of his saving grace on the streets of glory. Let me lift my voice, cast a path home at last. Ever to rejoice. We're so thankful for each of you this morning. Our visitor, you are honored guest as we look to my left. And our visitors from College Park, always good to see you. And I'm told maybe we have a visitor from East Point. Am I right? East Point. And so 
and other visitors, but the Jennings will get a chance to introduce you at the end of our worship service. We're thankful to be here this morning. Last Sunday, we were in Hope, Arkansas, my wife's hometown. We got a chance to have worship service in my mother and father-in-law's yard. Connecting them with the Church of Christ there, we're encouraged because all we want to do is tell people about Jesus everywhere we go. We're concerned, aren't we, about our family members. We want them to go to heaven also, but of course, they're going to have to give an account. We're going to have to be the best shining light we can representing Jesus Christ. This morning, as we come to the first day of the week to worship God in spirit and in truth, we are able to be in a month in which we have not seen. This is a day, of course, that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is the first day of the week. It is, this, it is Sunday. It's a blessing this morning because about three this morning, God blessed us with another grandbaby, my oldest son, has his third son. We didn't know whether or not it was going to be a girl or a boy. They wanted a boy, and they got their wish. <laughs> we celebrate also, this is my and Linda's anniversary, and so we're so thankful for that. She has been a wonderful help me. Uh, she defines in the dictionary a help me. Amen. <laughs> And so this morning, we want to deal with mental and spiritual health. I want to turn to him or the government about this because you, you, we have seen all the gun violence and other violence, and it all off time fall down to mental health. And the child of God must be careful because we too can get depressed. And if you say you don't, you probably need to repent. Because life, of course, brings about different trials and tribulations. James says, in James 1, verse number 2, when trials come, he didn't say if they come, they will come. And how do you respond to those things? It's so important. And and you all know, I don't have to tell you this, but the more you read God's word, the more you're filled with God's word, you're able to respond in a godly way. This morning, as we look at Elijah, I want you to notice what James says about Elijah. It is James chapter 1, James chapter 1, verse number 16. James chapter 5, verse number 16, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effect of fervent prayer of a righteous man of very much. Stay right in your life with God and God answers prayer. He answers the righteous cry. Paul takes it a little further. He said, he said, pray always, pray without ceasing. He goes a little deeper in Philippians chapter 4 where it says, don't worry about nothing but pray, with, pray about everything with prayer and supplication. Make your request be made known to God and do it in a thanksgiving fashion. God has been so good. I love a part of this. Can you imagine a man praying that it would not rain for three and a half years and he prays again and it rains? And then, listen to what James says about him. This was not a superman. The child of God, we're not super people. But we do all, extraordinary things, even though we're ordinary, we do extraordinary things because we have an extraordinary God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we need the prize of a righteous even today because we're living in an extraordinary time. But the church will rise to the occasion and do his bidding here on earth in the kingdom of God. And so we see in verse number 17, here it goes, Karen, to in verse number 17, 
Elijah was a man subject like passion as we are. What are you saying here, James? He was just an ordinary person. God used ordinary people to do extraordinary things. He can work in you and through you. And in, in the meantime, while he's working in you and through you, there's some times in which you get discouraged. That you're going to go through some things. I remind you in Acts chapter 5, uh, verse number 32 and following, the apostles, here they are. Uh, they were jailed because they're preaching the gospel, and they told them, don't preach the gospel anymore. We're going to release you, but don't preach the gospel anymore. Instead of them going home and crying, they said, they were told to go stand and preach all the things of this life in spite of what you just came out of. Come on, come on. That's so important in our lives that Christians, they're going to be sickness, they're going to be sadness, they're going to be betrayal, they're going to be rejection. They're going to be loved ones dying in your life. But you'll just still stay strong. Where do you go? You go to Jesus. You, you pray through Jesus to God. And, and God, here it goes. It, it says in verse number 15, and the prayer of faith shall give the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Sometimes we are distressed and burned out because of some sin we have committed and we, God has forgiven us, but we can't forgive ourselves. Lord, help us to forgive ourselves. Don't let Satan get you down and say you can't get up. He was a man of like passion. A man of like passion. Some of you have gone through a lot. Some of you have gone through even more than I have, and you're still standing by the grace of God. Amen. Losing many people in my life and, and you know, been a preacher all these years, ever since I was 23, but Jen and I are the same age, so you know well, how old I am, right? <laughs> <She's> older. Older. <laughs> <laughs> Mother Jen has said that, uh, you know, on television, I'm almost messing with him, and he said, Brother Moore, people think I'm really about 90 or 100 years old. <laughs> have to have someone to pick on, right? <laughs> and, and, and here we, we, we see so plainly that things, you're going to go through things, even in, in the ministry. I've, I'm going through so much, you're raising children, going to college, going all this at the same time, losing loved ones church members losing loved ones, being there for them and everything else. In the midst of that, do you not know you get discouraged? Sometimes you get depressed. I mean, one time I, I was going through so much and my secretary, Nancy Blackamore, she said, Brother Moore, just, just give me what you need and I'll give it to the members. I said, here you go. <laughs> Moses was told that, right? You can't do this by yourself. You get discouraged sometimes. You know, 36 years married to someone that obeyed the gospel to me, with me, and we, we preached and helped people share our lives with the church and all, the, all those years. And, and some people say, well, sometimes you, you, you mention your late wife too much. If that's my only problem, I think I'm okay. Y'all yeah. getting quiet on me. <laughs> come on, come on. And God bless me with a wonderful wife. And she lost her husband. A wonderful wife now. God bless me. But there's times when that's, she was a part of my life for 36 years. You know, and people have to remember that. But if that's my only problem, Marla, I think I'm okay. There's some people in the corner shaking. Y'all don't hear me, do you? See, what I'm saying is there's some things in your life. Sister Walker lost her mom at an early age, very early age. I talked to her father a lot about that. And that's, that's going to come up in your life. But she doesn't let it take us to another level. We can't let these things take us to another level. But, but still, the memories are there. People heal in different ways, don't they? They, they, they mourn in different ways. Uh, Barbara and I, we go back a long ways. She's a little younger than Brother Jennings and I, but watch it, Barbara. <laughs> Barbara and I, we have suffered through her losing 
three loved ones. Um, and, and I mean, husbands, of course, and lost her father. But she's still smiling, still strong, still hanging in there. Amen. Sister Jones and I have been together a long time. Remember her losing her parents. Still strong, still hanging in there. What makes the Christian still stand? Here's what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 11 and following. Paul says, he says this, Ephesians 4, Philippians chapter 4, rather, verse number 13. He said, I can do all things through Christ, which was, does, he does what with me? He strengthens me. What makes a Christian stand? First Peter chapter 5, verse number 7, casting all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. This man, Elijah, was a man of like passion. Like passion. And verse number 17, in, in James chapter 4, 5, verse number 17, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain, and it rained not for on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And, and you all, listen at verse number 18. Don't stop praying. The Bible says he prayed again. Have you prayed lately? And he prayed again, and, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. The faith prepared for righteous. Tell your Bible is 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Walk with me, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. You know, we often think we're very strong when it comes to mental health and spiritual health. And sometimes we can be strong, then we can be weak. Second Corinthians chapter 4, look at verse number 7. But we have, what do we have, Paul? We have this treasure in earthen vessels. Earthen vessels, see, we're just fragile human beings. We're just fragile earthen vessels. You ask Carrington, lawyer, NBA superstars, where do their strength come from? Not many would say from God. They say from their own abilities. Our dear, one of the players, he used to be on the Atlanta team, now he's in the uh, finals now, Hartford. When they interview him, the first thing they say, they put the mic to his phone, and he said, first, before, you, before I say anything, I just want to thank God who gave me the ability to play basketball. Uh -huh. Woo! And he said, now I'm ready to interview. Right, it is God, isn't it? Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 12, remember, God tells his people, Israel, don't you forget who brought you over before you go into the promised land. Don't forget who brought you this far. Children sometimes need to not forget who brought them that far. I'm your parent that sacrificed so many things for you. Don't forget who brought you this far. He says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse number 12 and following, because he, he, he tells them, I caused you to go through the wilderness in this fashion. I, I wanted you to be hungry because you need to know where your food comes from. I wanted you to be that way. God, he causes it not to rain for three and a half years. They need to know where the rain came from. They need to know. Isaiah 55, verse number 7 and following. God said, my thoughts are not like your thoughts, neither my ways like your ways. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways and my thoughts. He says, my word will not come back to me void. When I send rain on the earth, what happens is that it will accomplish what I have sent it there for. Those that are planting gardens now can appreciate the rain. He said, I, I have a purpose for it. And I have a purpose for you going through certain things. God could have taken them straight to the promised land, but God, he, he, he said, I, I caused you in Deuteronomy chapter 8 to go around the long way in, in order to, to show you 
show you who's God and who is in control. And, and, and you need to, and we need to do what? Appreciate him for all that he does. But hold, hold, we're just earthen vessels. He, he, he works through fragile earthen vessels. That's all we are. Verse number seven, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Paul is in the first chapter, in the first chapter of the, of the Corinthian letter, letter, Paul says in, in chapter one, uh, first Corinthians chapter two, verse one and following, he said, I preach Christ him crucified. In other words, and, 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 Paul, and Paul says in the verse, last verse of 1 Corinthians 1 that, that no man should glory, that the power is of God and not of man. We need to be ashamed of ourselves when we want the glory and the credit. It's God. God gets the glory. That the excellency may be of the power of God and not of us. For we are troubled, Paul. Paul said we are troubled. We are troubled, Paul? On every side. That's, that's part of that mental health and spiritual health. That's, that's part of being exhausted sometimes. We, we are exhausted all time. We'll see how Elijah was exhausted, and we see the antidote for exhaustion to be exhausted. We're persecuted, he says in verse number nine. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. Hebrews 13, verse number five, I never leave you nor forsake you. God is always there. We're cast down, but not destroyed. Remember how Muhammad Ali, he did do rope to dope, and that his opponent would just, just wear himself out, just beating on him, hitting his hands and everything else. And once he tires out, then he knocks him out. But what Paul is saying here, even though you're knocked down, you're not knocked out. You don't want anybody to get the TKO on you. <laughs> We're knocked down. You're out there now. We're thankful for Clark Television. We're on 51 in 51 countries at this time as we record. And wherever you are, you out there now, you may feel like you've been knocked down, but God is still there. Amen. Amen. You're not knocked out. That's a difference, isn't it? Yes, it is. Paul says we, we are not only troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Mm. We are perplexed but not in despair. He said, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in where? Our bodies. This body belongs to the Lord. Romans 12, verse number 1, Paul said, I beseech you, brethren, I beg you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may know what is good and perfect, will of God. This body belongs to God. It really does. Don't, don't abuse your body. And we'll talk about that short. Don't abuse your body. Your body belongs to God. For we, which are alive, always delivering unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our, here goes, mortal flesh. I want to skip on down to verse number 16. Here it goes. 2 Corinthians 4, verse number 16. For which cause we faint not. We don't get discouraged. We faint not. Why, Paul? He says, but though our outward man perish, and it's perishing. That's life. 
yet the inward man is renewed day by day because we keep renewing ourselves day by day in God's word. Remember what we mentioned about two weeks ago where uh, you have those that are religious and then those that are regenerated. A religious person just basically goes through the motion. Regenerated person, uh, it, it, Christianity is a lifestyle. It's part of your life. And you keep trying to improve on yourself because you're regenerated. Because you have been, here's the key word, Acts chapter 3, verse number 19, you have been converted. Been converted. That's a difference, isn't it? He says here, it's so beautiful. Look at verse number 17. For a lot of affliction, I have a lot of affliction, Paul. Paul had gone through so much. He said, I have a lot of affliction. He goes on to say in, Acts, in Romans chapter 8, verse number 18 and following, he says, I guess this lot of affliction, it would be worth it all when we get to heaven. Basically what he said. Isn't that wonderful? Remember that song? I can take the rain. <laughs> Because there's a better place prepared for us. Here it goes. For our lot of affliction, which is but for a moment. You know, life is short. It's just for a moment, isn't it? Working for us a four more seated in eternal weight of glory. While we do what, Paul? While we look not at the things which are seen. So, Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 1, faith is something things hope for, evidence of things not seen. Noah had not seen rain before, but he prepared for it. But the things, but the things which are not seen, but the things which are seen are temporary. They're temporary. This old world, it has on its stamp on this world, condemned one day it will all be burned up, 1 Peter chapter 3 and following. It will all be burned up. It will all be over. Because God has prepared a place for us. We'll live with him forever. But the things which are seen are not seen are eternal. But the, but the things which are not seen are eternal. But what about Elijah? Man of like passion. He had his trials and tribulations like we do. But I'm so glad God was able to work through him like he's able to work through you also. They said, well, Marla, how, how did you get through all of that when you were going through all that, God? What do you do all the time? Who do you depend on? God, every minute of the way. God. I didn't get too far ahead of myself, and that's what Jesus says. In Matthew chapter 6, verse number 34. He says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to bring enough problems itself. Just be concerned about here and now. And yes, well, the plan, but right now, let's enjoy today. Knowing that God would get us through. It is here in first, look at first King, chapter 18. First King, chapter 18. It is here that we see a victory. Elijah, he has a victory He's on the mountain, you know. We have victories. During this time of the year, our young kids are graduating, and some are graduating with honors, and some just making it through. That's a victory by itself. Right. Those that just made it through, I was in that category, just see me through. <laughs> That's a victory <laughs> to get on the other side. So we are experiencing a lot of that now during this time of the year. But Elijah, he had accomplished a great accomplishment, of a man just like us. And here he is, he's praying, and it does not rain for three and a half years. And he prays again, and it rains. But yet he becomes discouraged and depressed. Doesn't matter what kind of car you drive, house you live in. All those different things. Do you not know you can still get discouraged and depressed? You can have the greatest husband in the world. Sister Powell will tell you about the greatest husband in the world. She can define it. We'll, we'll put Brother Powell's 
picture and name in the encyclopedia, greatest husband in the world. <laughs> you can have all of that, but still Brother Bennett get discouraged. Y'all know that? Because that's the spiritual side. That's the spiritual side that has to be filled. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, keep in mind, even if you live by the word of God, sometimes you, you stray away and, and you forget about all God has done for you in your life. And you get discouraged and say, my life is just terrible. But you may be going through a valley right now. Just hold on to God's unchanging hand. And so, as we look at a brief overlook in 1 Kings chapter 17 and 19, briefly, this is what happens there in 1 Kings chapter 17 and 18 and 19. God works some miracles. There's no rainfall until Elijah says so. Ravens bring Elijah some food, oil, and flour multiply for a starving widow and her son. Remember, he brings him back from the dead. And later, Elijah, he, 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 he raises the widow's son, of course. And all these things are going on, chapter 17, 18, and 19. And then in chapter 18, verse 36, let's pick up there. Chapter 18, verse 36, verse Kings, chapter 18, verse number 36. Elijah alone, he challenges 450 priests of Baal. He watches them prepare and offer their sacrifices to Baal. With no results, then Elijah prepares and offers his sacrifice, here it goes, to the living God. He uses 12 stones, builds an altar, puts the wood on it, cuts up the bull, and sacrificed it. And here we go. We're in that scene now. It is verse number 36, 1 Samuel chapter, 1 Kings chapter 18. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the even sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. There are God in Atlanta. There are God in Africa. There are God in Ukraine and all over. He's everywhere. And that I am thy servant. It's a wonderful thing to be called a servant of God. You won't give me any title, just give me servant. I want to serve God. And that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O oh Lord, hear me. That this people may know that thou art the Lord God and that thou hast turned thy heart back again. God was trying to get his people's heart to come back their hearts to come back. Right. What would it take for the hearts of church members to come back? Right. What would it take to turn their hearts back? Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces. And they said, the Lord, he is God, and the Lord, he is God. And Elijah, in verse number 40, said unto them, take the prophets of Baal. Let not one of them escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kissam, and he slew them there. See, they were told to kill all false prophets. Even today in our lives, God tells us, Paul tells us in Romans chapter 16, verse number 16, the church of Christ salutes you with a holy kiss. He said, mark them that cause division among you. We're not trying to kill anybody, but we need to mark them. Yeah, right. 
Let, let people know that these are false teachers teaching false doctrine. And here, the Bible goes on to say, he says, and Elijah said unto them, Ahab, get thee up and, and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. The rain is about to come again. So Ahab, he went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Camp Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there is nothing. And he said, go again seven times. See, seven times is a number of completion. Seven days in the week. And they may have to dip in the water seven times. It's a number of completion. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arise a little cloud out of the sea, let him alight a man's hand. And he said, Go up, said unto Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in verse number 45, in the mean while that the heaven was black with clouds and the wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Now, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. Well, I would love for the hand of the Lord be on me, wouldn't you? Do you not know if you're a Christian, the hand of the Lord is on you? In Matthew 28, verse number 19 and following, he says, go and baptize him. And teach him, baptize him, and then teach him again. He says, and lo, I'll be with you always. Isn't that beautiful? The Lord is with you. The hand of the Lord is with you if you're a child of God. Look at verse number 1 in chapter 19. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword, then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, go, So let the God do to me, and more so, if I make not the life as the life of one of them by the morrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to... Now, you see, as he come to Bathsheba, he went which be, belonged to Judah, and he left his servant there. Now, you may not realize this, but he had already ran about 20 miles. And then he's going to walk another 20. He is trying to get away, isn't he? He's trying to get away from that woman. You know, all the time in, in, in basketball, one of the uh, commentators would say, Mama, there goes that man. <laughs> Carries what we can say about Elijah as he runs. <laughs> Mama, there goes that man. He's running. <laughs> He's running. He's running for his life. Elijah, of course, he begs God. Here's the sad commentary in verse number four. He begs God to kill him. To kill him. He gets depressed. He having mental issues at this time, emotional issues. What's within that? Is this man crazy? He's saying all this. Is he suicidal? Depressed? Did he forget about, here it goes now, the miracles God had just performed. It was a high point in his life. There are times in our lives when we have come from a very high point in life. And yet, we get discouraged. We get discouraged. I think the reason is found, turn your Bibles to Psalm 78. I think sometimes the reason is found here, like it was with God's people. We get discouraged in, in spite of everything. Psalm 78, look at verse number 24 and had rained down and manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven. Man did, uh, man did eat angel's food. He sent them meat 
to be full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven, and by his power, he brought in the south wind. See, God had done all of this, but God's people were still complaining. That's what we do sometimes, don't we? We forget all the things that God has done for us. Listen at verse number 32 in Psalm uh, chapter 7 to 8. For all this they sin still and believe not for his wondrous works. Therefore, in verse number 33, their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble when he slew them. Then they sought him and they returned and inquired after God. Now, here's the point I'm going to make in verse number 35. And they remembered that God was their rock. When you get discouraged, you need to realize that God is your rock. And the high God, their redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth. We have so much lip service. And they lied unto him with their tongues, for their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquities like he forgives our iniquities and destroyed them not. Now, now here's the point I want to make in verse number 38. Yea, many a times turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. He has done that to me. He has done that to you. He could have done so much to take us out, but he left us in, in spite of sin. But we must repent. For he remembered, here it goes, he remembered that they were but flesh and wind that pass away and cometh not again. So, so the point I'm making here is that, that God, he knows that we're flesh and blood. He made us. He knows that we're earthen vessels. That we're just ordinary people. That we get discouraged. We get depressed. We get tired. Elijah had gotten tired. Let me give you some points, and the lesson would be yours as to what we need to do about mental health and spiritual health. Elijah was a mighty man of God. He had certainly lost his, here it goes now, faith. Certainly lost his faith. No, he, he was not crazy, and he had not lost his faith in a sense. He might have been depressed, certainly discouraged, but yet he didn't know what was going on in his life to a certain degree. Now here's some tips. First of all, Elijah is exhausted. When we're exhausted, we need to get some rest. So he was physically exhausted. He completed a major building project by making the altar. Then it rained and walks, and he walked several miles, remember 20 miles, ran 20 miles, then walked uh, 20. You have to think about this now. He was in pretty good shape. He was tired, sleepy, and hungry. And Elijah asked God to kill him twice. He asked God to kill him twice. Notice this. God gave him, what did God give him? He gave him food. He gave him food to eat. Then after he was rested full, he had the strength to go on. We need food. We need rest, don't we? In the Bible, as we look at the Bible, oftentimes the theme is this, to walk and not grow weary. Walk and not grow weary. You know, we, we see this in Galatians chapter 6, verse number 7 through 8. You remember, it talks about, don't be weary of well-doing. You will reap that you think not. Sometimes we just get tired and tired and tired. No, just keep doing good. Your labor in the Lord is never in vain. This is another point. We need to take care of ourselves physically. We really do. When we're tired, we need to get enough rest and sleep. And we need to eat the right food. Y'all hear me now? The right food. 
to give us the right energy. Certain food give you energy. And so, but Elijah, later we see Elijah, he believed a lie. See, sometimes we can believe a lie. That's why we're so depressed. Let me tell y'all about this lie. You, you see over in verses number 11 and following, in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse number 10 and following, he had said, I am alone. I am left alone. Yet the story mentioned a hundred other prophets and 7,000 God worshipers. They had not bowed their knees to Baal. Though Elijah was a man of God, he believed the lie that he was alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. God is there. Perhaps that you feel after him. He's there. He cares for you. He surely left alone. He, he, he surely felt lonely, felt lonely and frightened to think that he was only a God follower in an entire nation. You know, sometimes, but, but I'm the only righteous person around. <laughs> You're holding that. <laughs> You're not the only righteous person around. <laughs> That's why, you know, you, you know, even when it comes to the church, you know, I tell people all the time, um, there are a lot of churches of Christ are preaching the truth. Not all of them are, have gone to the left, you know. We're not the only one. Listen, at the second one, and we'll be closing. We need to... We need to separate the truth from the lies and focus on thinking on the truth. You should know the truth, and truth shall make you free. Third, Elijah, he said, isolated, although other God followers were in the story. For the most part, Elijah was isolated, and so he felt alone. Occasionally, his servant was with him, but he didn't have fellowship with other God followers. We must fellowship with one another. We draw strength from one another. But God speaks to him in a small, quiet voice. Look at verse number 12 as we close. And after the earthquake and the fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still, small voice. God is speaking to you right now through his word. You're depressed. You know what God's word is saying? As we read God's word, just cast your cares upon me. I'm here. I care for you. I made you. I know what you're made out of. I know every thought before you even think it. I know every prayer before you pray it. But I want you to pray it because I want to see your faith in me. And that's nothing too impossible for me, my child. Nothing too impossible for me. And I could do so much in your life if you just get some rest when you're exalted, eat like you should, and get back on the battlefield. Lord, help us to protect our physical and mental health because it's all a part of our spiritual health. This morning, you heard the word of God. You've been so patient. You have heard the word of God. Elijah is our example of what we can do through God. Let him work through you. He wanted to work through you this morning. Some of you may not have allowed him to work through you because you have not obeyed the gospel to connect with him. And the way you do that is hearing the word. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Jesus died that you may be connected to God. He died on the cross of Calvary that you may be connected. He died for your sin. Then, once you have heard the word, you must believe it. Once you believe, you must repent of your sins. We must repent, mean turn around, turn from wrong and turn to right. Then confess Christ the sweetest name on mortal tongue. Be buried with him in baptism. You become a new creature in Christ. Your name is written in heaven. And when you get discouraged, you just pray to him. Cast your cares upon him. He, he'll take care of you. And all the time, we get depressed because we're in sin that we should have gotten out of by now. You know what it does? Take your father and you ever want to go, calls you more than you ever want to pay, keeps you longer than you ever want to stay. God, God want to bring you out of all that. He want to bring you out. And so this morning, Brother Marcus is going to lead us in our invitation song. We ask you to examine yourself wherever you are in the world. We'd be glad to find a congregation that will 
uh, minister to you, that will take care of you, that will baptize you and sustain you in the faith and just keep going and teaching you the word of God. And so our invitation song is number 904. Have you been to Jesus? 904. Please stand. 904. Have you been, been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace? This hour, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb of the Lamb. Are you garment but this or they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? You walking daily by the Savior's side. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest his moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed? Are you washed in the blood? In the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb. All your garments, spotless are they white as snow. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Amen. Prepare our hearts and minds for the Lord's Supper. We're going to sing number hymn, hymn number 382. Three eighty-two. Pray for the Lord's Supper. Three eighty-two. Ready? Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble goal? Why did he choose a lowly bird? Because he loved me so. Jesus gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me so. Why did he drink the bitter cup of sorrow, pain, and woe? Why on the cross be lifted up? Uh, because he loved me so, he loved me so, me so, Jesus loved me so, he loves me so, Jesus gave his precious life for me, for me, because he loved me. come down to communion on this first day of the week. And as the message says, let us not forget God and what he had done for us by giving his son Jesus to die for our sins. We come together on the first day of the week to remember his death, burial, and resurrection. We see this example in Acts 20 verse 7. And now concerning the now, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came to get the great bread, Paul read it apart the next day, spoke to them, and continued his message until midnight. Also, Matthew, the 26th chapter, verse 26 to 28, when we see the institution of the Lord's Supper, and it says, and now as they were sitting, Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciple and said, this, eat, this is my body. Let us pray for the bread. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for your Lord, uh, for your son, Jesus Christ, who sacrificed his body on the cross. And we pray, Lord, 
that we will take this bread and represent his body on the cross. And we'll examine ourselves that we're taking the matter that peace from thy sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Then he took the cup. He blessed it, gave it to the disciple, and said, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my body of the new covenant, which is shared for many for the remission of sin. Let us pray for the blood. Heavenly well, Father, we thank you, Lord. For your son's sacrifice in Christ, who shed the blood for our sins. We pray, Lord, that we are taken and examine ourselves in the manner that Jesus took my sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That concludes Lord's Supper. Also, we're commanded to give in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2. Now concerning the collection of the saints, I have a gate. The orders of the Church of Galatians, even so do ye, from the first of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up that he may prosper, that there will be no collection when I come. Also, in 2 Corinthians 9, verses 6 and 7, they give us the attitude how we should give. And it says, This I say, he who sows sparsely will also reap sparsely. He that sows sparsely will also reap sparsely. But let each one give, that is the purpose in the heart, not grudging or necessity. Necessity for God loves a cheerful gift. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all the best you have given to us. Not only this physical body and the physical spiritual things, but most of all, the spiritual, which is in Christ Jesus. We know we get everything from you and not on our own. And we give back to you a lot that we can't give because you give much that no one can match us. We pray, Lord, thank you for the blessing that we go out and work and bring by a portion of our lay back to you. And we pray, Lord, that we use the upkeep of our kingdom and most of the spread of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Uh, you can give as you go out to the best do, or you can give online on, on our app, Gipify. Thank you. Song be here number, I sh here number 976. I should not be moved. Just one verse. I should not be moved. 976. Ready? Glory, hallelujah. I shall not be moved. Anger in Jehovah. I shall, I shall not, not be moved just like a tree that's, that's planted by the water. Sing it now. I shall not be moved. Sing it now. I shall not. I shall not be moved. Sing it now. I shall not. I shall not be moved just like a tree that's planted by the water. Sing it now. I shall not be moved. Let us pray. Father, it's once more again that we are so grateful that you have given us an opportunity to worship you in spirit and in we thank you for this day and for the week that lies ahead. Mm -hmm. We pray that you will go with us and guide us and protect us and direct
stretch us and those who may be weak and weary and worn, those who may even be exhausted, that you might give them a resurgence of energy to tie a knot and hold on, knowing that thou art God and that you love them. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we ask it all. Amen. Amen. We want to take this opportunity to recognize visitors on this side of the auditorium, we would ask that you would stand, that we might at least recognize your presence and shake your hand before you depart today. Any visitors on this side, thank you so very much for coming. Might I just ask your name? so very much. Thank you so much for coming. Any visitors on this side of the auditorium? Seeing that they are none, we want to thank you for your presence and thank all of you for your presence as well. We do have a card that we have received and I'd like to share that with you at this time. I'm truly blessed to have such an amazing family here at the Atlanta Air Force Area Church of Christ. I appreciate all of your prayers and many thoughts for my family and myself. 